In section 3.2, we're going to learn how to solve systems of equations algebraically. Hopefully you remember from the previous lesson video 3.1, we solved systems using graphs and tables. Sometimes it's not obvious what the solution is of a system when given a graph or a table. So today we're going to learn two other methods, or relearn from Algebra 1, two methods that we can use if this is the situation. So the two methods are substitution and elimination. Substitution is when you plug in one equation in for a variable in another equation, and then you solve for the variable that is remaining. It is best to use substitution when it is easy to isolate one of the variables. Elimination is the other method, and this is how it works. When the coefficients of either the x or the y are identical, you want to add or subtract one equation from the other to eliminate one of the variables and then solve for the other variable. And it's best to use elimination when the equations are in standard form, ax plus by equals c, and the like variables are lined up. In example one, we're going to be using substitution to solve the given system of equations. We have the two equations, 3x plus 4y equals 12, and 2x plus y equals 10. So first thing we want to do is solve one of the equations for one of the variables. Now taking a look at both of the equations, the second equation has a coefficient um, of 1 in front of the y. That means that this is the easiest variable to isolate. So what I'm going to do is take this equation and get y by itself, or isolate the y. So I'm going to subtract 2x to the other side. So now I have y equals negative 2x plus 10. So now you can see y is solved for. Now in the other equation we have 3x plus 4y equals 12. That was what was given. Now what we're going to do is take the negative 2x plus 10. Because that is equal to y, that is going to replace the y in the other equation. So this is where we're substituting. So the 3x drops, the 4 drops, and instead of writing a y, you're going to put the negative 2x plus 10. Now you can see that the variable that is remaining is only x, so we can easily use a couple algebraic steps to solve for x. So what I want to do now is distribute the 4, So I get 3x minus 8x plus 40 equals 12. And then when I combine like terms, I get negative 5x plus 40 equals 12. Two steps to solve. Find that x is equal to 5.6. Now that we know what x is, we can substitute this value for x into either one of the original equations. And I'm going to choose the second equation just because the numbers are smaller, so it's easier to work with. When substituting in 5.6 for x, we find out that we have 11.2 plus y equals 10. Subtract 11.2 from both sides, and we find out that y is equal to negative 1.2. So now that we have our x and y, we can just put that in coordinate form, and that is our solution. 5.6 comma negative 1.2. And remember, solution of a system of equations is where the two graphs intersect. So obviously, since they're decimals, this would be hard to tell on a graph um, as well as a table. So the best way to do this was using the method of substitution. In example two, we're given a real life application problem where we can use sub substitution to solve. A music store offers piano lessons at a discount for customers buying new pianos. The costs for lessons and a one-time fee for materials, including music, music books, CDs, software, etc., are shown in the advertisement. What is the cost of each lesson and the one-time fee for materials? As always, for a word problem, the first thing we want to do before writing the equations is saying what our variables stand for. So let's say C stands for the cost of one lesson, and F stands for the one-time fee. Now we're ready to write our system of equations. Our first equation is going to be 6C plus F equals 300, because you are taking six lessons 
and you're paying a one-time fee included at $300. And similarly, for 12 lessons and a one-time fee, you're paying $480. So our second equation is going to be 12C plus F equals 480. Now what we want to do is solve for one of the variables. Most likely it's going to be F because there's just a coefficient of one. And then substitute one of the equations in for the other to solve for the variables. So I'm going to work with the first equation, and in order to get f by itself, I'm going to subtract 6c to the other side because there's an invisible positive sign in front of the 6c. So we have f equals negative 6c plus 300. Now you can see f is isolated or solved for, so we can easily take the expression that f is equal to, negative 6c plus 300, and substitute that in for f in the other equation. When substituting this expression in for f, we get this equation. Now what we want to do is combine like terms and then solve for c. So when doing inverse operations or opposite operations, we find out that c is equal to 30. So that means the cost of one lesson is $30. Now we're going to use this value and substitute back in for either equation to find out what the one-time fee is equal to. When substituting in 30 for C into the first equation, by the way, you can use either equation, you'll still get the same answer. We have 6 times 30, which is 180, plus F equals 300. When we subtract 180 from both sides, we find out that the one-time fee is $120. Before moving on to the next problem, we must check our answers to make sure they work for both equations. So let's plug in C equals 30 and F equals 120 and see if they work. Looks like it satisfies the first equation. And the second equation is also satisfied. So remember, you must check both equations to make sure that the solutions work for the whole system. So we can conclude that the cost of each lesson is $30 and the one-time fee for materials is $120. Now we're going to practice solving systems using elimination. And as I discussed in the beginning of this lesson video, the coefficients of either x or y must be identical in order to use elimination. Specifically, the signs in front are also important. You want to add the equations if the signs in front are opposite of each other. For example, a plus and a minus, or a minus and a plus. And you want to subtract the equations if the signs in front are the same. For example, two positives or two negatives. So let's take a look at example three. We have the system of equations 4x plus 2y equals 9 and negative 4x plus 3y equals 16. As you can see, they are both in standard form and the x and the y's are lined up. Now let's focus in on the coefficients. The coefficients of the x variable are 4 and negative 4. They are identical to each other. They just have opposite signs. So let's focus on these numbers. And since they're opposite signs, in order to cancel out the 4 and the negative 4, we're going to be adding. So put a plus sign in front and a line underneath, and we're going to be adding vertically. When you add 4x and negative 4x, they cancel out. When you add 2y and 3y, you get 5y. And when you add 16 and 9, you get 25. From there, it's a one step because there's only one variable left. And we find out that y is equal to 5. So we found out the y coordinate. Now we're going to use this number 5 and plug in or substitute the 5 for either equation. I'm just going to work with the first equation because it does look a little bit easier. So now instead of writing a y, I'm going to plug in the 5 that we just found. And then from there, it's just a few steps to solve for x. So we find out that x is equal to negative 1 fourth and y is equal to 5. So our coordinate point for the solution is negative 1 fourth comma 5. And remember, a solution is where the two graphs intersect. In example 4, we have a system of equations where the 
coefficients of the variables are not the same. So what we need to do is create an equivalent system in order for us to solve it. So let's talk about what an equivalent system is. It is a system that is created by multiplying one or both equations by the same non-zero number. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, the new system will still have the same solutions as the original system. So let's focus in on the equations that we're given. 2x plus 7y equals 4, and 3x plus 5y equals negative 5. So as we were talking about before, the coefficients have to be the same. So let's look at the coefficients of the x. We have 2 and 3. So the smallest number that they would both go into would be 6 because 2 times 3 is 6. So maybe we should make the coefficient of the x 6. The other option is to make the coefficient of the y 35, which is a bigger number, uh, because we get 7 times 5 and that's 35. Let's deal with the coefficient of the x just because it deals with smaller numbers. Let's multiply the first equation by 3 and the second equation by negative 2. So that way we get a positive 6 in front of the first equation and a negative 6 in front of the second equation and we can easily add the two equations to eliminate the x variable. Here is our equivalent system when we multiplied by those numbers and you can see that the coefficient of the x is 6 and negative 6 so we can add those because they have opposite signs and when we add we get rid of the x values they eliminate we get 11y here and we have 22 on the other side. One step equation, divide both sides by 11 and we find out that y equals 2. From there we want to substitute the 2 in for either equation to solve for the x variable. Like I've talked about before, you can choose either equation 1 or 2 to plug in the y equals 2. I chose the first equation, so we have 2x plus 7 times 2 equals 4. And then we just need to do two steps to solve. And when we divide by 2 on both sides, we find out that x is equal to negative 5. So we found out our x-coordinate is negative 5, and our y-coordinate is positive 2. So our solution, or the intersection point of these two equations, is the coordinate negative 5, 2. And remember, you can always substitute your coordinate back in for both equations to check to make sure you got the right answer. Now in the last example, we're going to take a look at a system of equations that has um, solutions that are not unique, aka they will have special cases such as infinitely many solutions or no solutions. Do you remember when we saw infinitely many solutions and no solutions as possible answers for chapter 1 problems? Absolute value equations, inequalities, etc. Well, these answers are actually possibilities when we solve a system of equations. So just like before, the variables will cancel out. If you get a true statement such as 2 equals 2, that means there are infinitely many solutions, and that also means that the equations actually represent the same line, so that means if one line is on top of another, it just has infinitely many intersection points. The other possibility is if you get a false statement such as 1 equals 2, that means that there is no solution, aka no intersection point, and that's because they are parallel lines, which mean they will never intersect. So in example 5, we're actually going to have the opportunity to see one of each of these special cases. So let's focus in on part A. We have negative 3x plus y equals negative 5, and 3x minus y is equal to 5. So they all have opposite signs, so that means we're going to add to eliminate. So when we add, we actually cancel out everything. So we just get 0 equals 0, which is a true statement. So since elimination gave us an equation that is always true, the two equations in this system represent the same line. This means the system is dependent and it has infinitely many solutions. So every single point is an intersection point for both equations because it's actually the same line that's being represented. In part B, we have the equations 4x minus 6y equals 6 and negative 4x plus 6y equals 10. So to eliminate one of the variables, or perhaps both, we can add the two equations because they have opposite signs. So what happens is the 4x's cancel and the 6y's cancel, so we just have 0 on that side, and then we get 16 on the other side. This is always false. So that means that the equations in this system represent parallel lines. Therefore, this system is inconsistent and has no solutions. Because we have two parallel lines, they will never intersect. Therefore, they won't have a solution. 
Here's our 3.2 lesson check problems. Make sure you write them down and show your work and complete them. And please let me know if you have any questions the next time we see each other. Have a great day.